The list of worst landlords across the city is being released later this morning, but we've got a sneak peek, and it's no surprise who's at the top of the list. Yeah, so for the fourth year in the row, NYCHA ranked the overall worst landlord in the city with a backlog of more than 600,000 work orders. Public advocate Jamani Williams, the man behind the annual ranking, and he joins us this morning with a preview of this list. So good morning to you, public advocate. Good to see you again. Good morning. Great to see you, and obviously some terrible breaking news in our prayers uh, with that lieutenant. Yes, thank you for that, and I'm sure a lot of people, are, are, our thoughts and prayers are with the entire NYPD this morning, a speedy recovery, right? Um, but I want to get to this list here, because Pix 11 News, Monica Morales, you know her well, she makes it happen, right? We've been covering this for what feels like ever, about NYCHA mm -hmm. really being on the top of this list, and rather than getting better, it's actually gotten worse. So is the problem, sir, a lack of staff? Is it a lack of money? And what can a new administration do to address some of the issues? It's really tough to watch this. Uh, NYCHA being the worst landlord means the city is the worst landlord. Unfortunately, uh, the de Blasio administration uh, is leaving NYCHA worse than they found it. And who would have thought that is over almost 150,000 more open violations than they were when he first came in. Thankfully, we do have a new administration. Uh, we are asking that the administration do a few things, uh, allow the HPD uh, to be able to uh -huh oversee these violations the same way they do regular uh, prior violations because it's hard to keep track of them. It's hard to get them fixed. Yeah. So you do think specifically, though, do you think it is staffing or or funding? Oh, I think it's I think it's both. We, Combination we absolutely of need more funding. Management has absolutely been terrible as well. Uh, through this administration, we've seen uh, bad management. We've seen uh, not enough investment. Yeah. Uh, we've seen lies. Uh, we've seen so many things happen mm. under this administration. Yeah. It's been tough to watch. It's very frustrating. There is a new name, though, at the top of the worst landlords list. Uh, what can you tell us about him, and where are the buildings that he owns? Well, you know, night is so bad, we have to put it in a uh, spot by itself. Right. Exactly. And then, we go, then we go to the private landlords. David Shaw is now number one. Uh, he's taken over the ranks. Uh, the number one from last year, uh, Jason uh, Korn, has dropped. Some he actually did a little bit better, but he sold off some buildings as well. Uh, uh, but David Shaw was 75 last time. He is number one now wow. uh, in Morningside Heights and Harlem and in some other places. And we have to be clear. These are not just small violations. These are the worst of the worst. This is mold. This is rat. This yeah. is leak. This is the worst of the worst. And people have to live in these conditions. which And, and, then, they, and then they get docked if they don't pay their rent, right? Because the landlords go and say, hey, they're not paying. But is there one borough that would you say that has maybe a higher number of worst landlords? Are they spread out? Is it like equal playing field across the five boroughs? So quite honestly, what we've seen uh, uh, in the top 10, each one has a little bit less violations uh, than before. But over the overall list, it's gone up. Mm -hmm. And it's gone up a lot. And as you said, uh, across the city, people have to live in these conditions. Uh, the number one, David Shaw, actually gets J-51 tax abatement credits. Yeah. So he's getting free money while me, this is happening. Let me ask you this, because I think, I think I spoke to you last year about this very list. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you last year. There's repeat offenders that are on the list. What's the penalty for them? How are they being held accountable? That's what's so frustrating. Well, we're asking the incoming administration to support us on uh, the uh, what, uh, uh, Landlord Accountability Act to do exactly what you said. These landlords get to self-certify when they have repairs being done. We need that to stop for the worst of the, the bad actors. Uh, we need HPD to be able to go in there much quicker, get the repairs done, uh, so that these tenants can live in good conditions, and then you charge the landlord. Uh, so those are a few things that we can do right now, but we have to have support to get it done. We do have to beef up HPD as well uh, so they can get inspectors out there much quicker and get the work done. Mm. I mean, here's the thing, though. I mean, the pandemic is really causing everyone to struggle. It's caused economic hardship not only for the renters across New York City, but also for the landlords as well. So was any of that taken into account when you were putting together this list? Of course, the pandemic has hit everybody, mm -hmm. uh, owners and tenants alike, so we have to be clear about that. I also want to be clear, these are not one, two, four, three, four, six family homes. Uh, these are people who own a lot, a lot of buildings. And in addition to that, if they go to HPD, there's a lot of products that they have that can get them the funding they need to uh, make the repairs that are done. So there's a lot of different ways that, that are needed. There's a lot of different ways that this can be done if people want to get it done. And these are the worst yeah. of the worst. Okay, got it. Uh, public advocate Jamani Williams is going to ask you to just remove your public advocate hat and put your governor candidate hat on. And let me just ask you, you plan on staying in the race? You know, there's a whole lot of 
talk about people dropping out now that Tis James has kind of stepped aside. You're staying in. I, I've, I've always said I'm um, going to uh, to the finish line. We have a, a, a great vision. Uh, we thought we had a path before. We still have a path. We believe we have a path now. Uh, I have a great relationship with the attorney general, uh, and she's doing a great job. And uh, she took a personal decision. Uh, and we have a, a vision. And we said before we weren't running against any one person, mm -hmm. but we were going to put our vision out of what the state should be. Uh, really, people understanding right now that status quo is what got us here, yeah. and we can't be a status quo going forward. Got it. All right, Public Advocate Jamani Williams, thank you so much for joining us this morning and also for revealing that complete list of worst landlords. You're going to do that at a press conference in a couple of hours. So thanks for giving us a preview this morning. Thank you. Thank you. If we don't talk to you, have a happy holiday, all right? You too. Peace. All right. Thank you.